this video we're going to talk about linear approximation or approximation using differentials and we're going to look at functions from a general Euclidean space Rn into another Euclidean space Rm so now M and N are whatever number we would like so far we've seen from Rn into R1 we've seen how to approximate that using differentials and we do a linear approximation we're going to use that idea to now look at general linear approximations so the best way of course to do this is by introducing an example q of p1 p2 y will have two components q1 of p1 P2, Y. The second component, of course, is Q2 of P1, P2, Y. And the, the numbers that we're going to assign here, well, this will be 6 P1 to the negative 2, about P2 to the 3 halves, Y, comma, 4 P1 p2 to the negative 1 about y square. This is just the function that we're defining and we can think of this as q1 being the price of good 1, q2 being the price of good 2, p1 is the price of good 1, so q1 is the production or the quantity of the first product, the p's are the prices and y is the overall income for the economy. And we want to do a linear approximation. We want to figure out what the marginals of production are for this object for a general small change in P1, P2, and Y. So that is using a differential of this price vector and the income vector. So that vector represents everything in my economy. Well, the natural thing to do is to approximate q1 and q2 linearly. So we just use differentials to approximate those guys. Uh, and, uh, and so if we did that, right, then we would have q1 of p1 plus delta p1. So I'm going to write it out kind of abstractly here, and then we'll look at uh, what this this number should be. We'll look for look at a specific case for computing that delta p2 y plus delta y. So this is just q1 now. Well, we know how to approximate this guy linearly. It's approximately we'll have q1 evaluated at p1 p2 y and then we'll add the term partial of q1 with respect to p1 of p1 p2 y delta p1 plus partial q1 with respect to p2 now so I'm just going through all the coordinates p1 p2 y delta y or delta p2 sorry plus dq1 dy now is the last one p1 p2 y delta y so that was our linear approximation for q1 what's our linear approximation for q2 q2 of p1 plus delta p1 p2 plus delta p2 the third argument is y plus delta y and I want to look at that approximation I'll have q2 of p1 p2 y you should be writing this with me just to just to get in the habit of knowing exactly what what expressions you have to write even though Obviously, it takes a long time to write all this stuff. So I have P1, P2, 
y delta p1 plus dq2 dp2 p1 p2 y delta p p2 plus dq2 last term dy p1 p2 y delta y now that looks really hideous it does not look pretty so when we have and and essentially what we have here is a linear equation right it's a linear equation where I essentially fix P1, P2, and Y, and I'm allowed to vary delta P1, delta P2, and delta Y. You might you might think of this as a normal equation, say for for a line, um, but don't don't think of that as a normal equation. But it's a, it's a linear equation where I add this, and I have linear terms in delta P1, delta P2, and delta Y. So if I put this all together in a matrix, then I'm going to have just Q of P1 plus delta P1, P2 plus delta P2, Y plus delta Y, that's going to be equal to, right, so the first component of this guy will be just Q1 of this guy, so the first component will have a constant term of Q1 of P1, P2, Y, and Q2 of P1, P2, Y. And then I'll add, well, I've got these two guys here, right? Well, what is this? This is really a dot product, right? This is a dot product. This term here in the, in the first variable will be a dot product. Um, so it's going to be, and what is, what is this dot product of, right? Well, it's the this guy, dq1, dp1, is essentially just the gradient of my guy, and this other vector is my change vector, right, for my economy. So I'm going to say that, I'm, so let's just write it out for a second. This is dq1, dp1, and I'll suppress the argument, delta p1 plus dq1, dp2, delta p2, and then plus d q1 dy delta y. And then what's this guy? Well, it's d q2, right? So from this component, I'll have d q2 d p1 delta p1 plus d q2 over d p2 delta p2 plus d q two dy delta y. So I've got this vector plus this vector, but if I look at this vector closely, right, well, it's just exactly going to be, so so now I'm going to write this as just simply q of, so, and of course this is approximation, approximation, right, approximation. This is just q of p1, p2, y, plus and I can show this, right, it's, it's pretty easy to see that this is the case, that this is dq1, dp1, dq1, dp2, dq1, dy, dq2, dp1, dq2, dp2, dq2, dy, multiplied by the change vector. So I have delta p1, delta p2, and delta y. That's my change vector. And we have a nice interpretation for all these quantities, right? So this is, uh, this is the value at the point where we want to approximate, 
right? We want to approximate around this point. This guy is just the Jacobian of Q. And this is the change vector or differential. And we can use this to do computations. And it follows pretty readily. So let's do a linear approximation when P1, P2, y is equal to 2. Well, in order to do this, all we need is 1, the value at this point, and then 2, the Jacobian. And then for every delta p1, delta p2, and delta y, we have our linear approximation. So I'm just going to go ahead and compute q of p1, p2, and y, just to make this all concrete for you. Well, at this point, q of p1, p2, y is equal to q1 of 6, 9, 2, q2 of 6, 9, 2. Yeah, I'm, so I'm sorry. I, I actually wanted this point to be... The whole point is that this point is 6, 9, 2. When we plug that into our expressions for Q1 and Q2, if we remember what they are, that's going to be 6 times P1 substitutes as 6 to the negative 2 times 9 to the 3 halves times 2. That was the y value. And then for the second one, I'll have 4 times 6 times 9 to the negative 1 times y squared, so that'll be 2 squared. So this value will be ultimately 9 here, if you calculate that out. And the other value is going to be 32 thirds. So that's my point uh, of approximation. That's the point that I want to approximate around. That's the value at the point where I want to approximate. And now I have to compute a lot of derivatives. So of course we're doing multivariable differentiation. And so that multivariable means many variables. So we have to do many differentiations, exactly six of them. So let's start with it. dq1, dp1 of 6, 9, 2 is equal to, well, when we differentiate with respect to P1, we'll have negative 12 P1, negative 3, P2 to the 3 halves, Y, and we want to evaluate at the point 6, 9, 2. And when we do evaluate that, uh, we're going to get negative 12 times, uh, ultimately times 27, lots of nasty numbers in here, 36 times 6, which should be equal to, or times 2, which should be equal to negative 3, dq1 dp2 of 6, 9, 2, That friendly fellow should be six p one negative two, right? So we just we're just skipping the differentiation because it's essentially polynomial di differentiation, and we should know how to do that. P two one half y evaluate at six nine two. Ultimately, we should end up with if you evaluate this, you should acquire a three halves. dq1, dp, or dy now, is the final one, 6, 9, 2, is equal to 6, p1, negative 2, p2, 3 halves, evaluated at 6, 9, 2, will yield 9 halves. 
So those are all the Q1 derivatives, and now I have to do all the Q2 derivatives. So dQ2 dP1 of 6, 9, 2 is equal to 4 P2 negative 1 y squared evaluated at 6, 9, 2 evaluates to be 16 over 9 dQ2 dP2 of 6, 9, 2 is equal to negative 4 or sorry, negative 4, p1, p2, minus 2, y squared, evaluate it, again, 6, 9, 2, is equal to, it eventually you evaluate that, you should get 32 over 27, and dq2, dy, evaluated at 6, 9, 2, is equal to 8, p1, P2 inverse Y evaluated at 6, 9, 2 should yield 32 thirds. And therefore, putting all these numbers together, we have a linear approximation, which is Q of 6 plus delta P1, 9 plus delta P2. 2 plus delta y is going to be approximately equal to 9, 32 thirds plus the Jacobian, and I know all the values of the Jacobian, it's negative 3, 3 halves, 9 halves, down here we have 16 over 9, negative 32 over 27, 32 over 3, and here we just have the change vector. And we could plug in any small amount here and know exactly what that approximation should be.